Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you so much for coming today. We know that we know how important your time is, and we, we greatly appreciate you coming in this morning. Um, we do have a sign-in sheet that I'm just going to start over here, and we'll pass around. So just check your name, if, uh, if you will, for us. Thank you. My name is Eugenia Vavra. I'm the community building manager in the health area. We also have Doug Griesenauer, who's our education area, and Judy Stuffel is within our financial stability area. So thank you. So today we just wanted to go over a couple items, or two objectives, basically. And the first one is to make sure that you're all equipped with the knowledge that you need to know on how to calculate your total impact served. And we'll get into that. Doug will have lots of examples so that you'll leave here knowing fully how to do this. And then the second objective we have is to develop consistent practices in how we're all uh, compiling our demographics. So in the past, you know, we, we've talked about, you know, how many to include within those numbers. Well, we're going to make it very clear so that you'll have all of that information to, to put the right information in there so that we can all use this information. So let's get started. A couple of things I want to do. Uh, I know how many of you are new to the community building database? So pretty much half of you. So what I'm going to do is start at, at the beginning, just a few basic tips on how to log in or where to go if, if you're having trouble finding how to do that. So the first, logging in. All right, that didn't work, sorry. I was trying my new toggle and it didn't work. Maybe I need help, no I don't. Okay, we recovered from that one. Okay, so basically go to the community building website and you can't see the actual address up there, um, but it is within the training manual that we have listed on our website. And it's the uh, basically uweci.upicsolutions.org. And you'll get to this page. So uh, what you'll do is you'll sign in with your user ID and password. And this is typically, uh, well, you all know what it is. It's the same for both, um, unless you've changed that for whatever reason. So if if you do have issues with your login or you forgot what it is, then you can click on the forgot password and it'll send it right to you through your email address. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here. And if for whatever reason, again, you're not able to do this, this is a good example. Uh, the time allowed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and refresh this screen. Okay. We're going to go back and see what happened. Maybe we can go get through this again. Um, I had the screen up like for a half an hour before you all came, so it probably just timed out its session. So we're going to log in here. Okay, so here it has me on my home page. And now if you weren't able to get here, maybe another error occurred and, and things just aren't working properly. Another tip is to go into your tools and click on um, compatibility view. And so it's gonna kind of refresh the screen and then it'll be in this compatibility view. And I might have to sign off and sign back on because it was already working properly. I'm just going to go back to my favorites. Another thing we ask you to do is save the address in your favorites. So if you do have issues or finding, not finding where that address is, it'll pop it back up for you. So it did sign me in. I'm going to change this to our test site so that when Doug gets up here, he can use that. So that's all ready to go. Um, so another place you can find our database website is on our actual uh, website, and I'll show you where that is. And some of you may have accessed the database this way too. 
essentially you'll go to our website and then in the partner overview there's an applications and training workshop and information section that you'll click on it'll bring up this page and then towards the bottom you'll find community building database training and then you can click here to access the online database so there's just another way that you can access the tr database as well so a few more troubleshooting tips that I've already kind of covered again that compatibility view um, you know what sometimes if you've tried to uh, log in multiple times and with the wrong uh, password then it'll actually log you out so and I think that has to happen like six times so just call one of your representatives and we'll unlock your account for you and reset everything and get get you going again uh, some other kind of points to to think about is when you are in the database some a lot of errors occur because folks might be um, sorry let me get back to the database and they might occur because maybe your uh, uh, let's say you're in your reporting requirements we'll go there And, w and you're within a particular screen and you want to go back so you think oh well I'll just click this back arrow and that'll take me back well actually that uh, you might get an error response if you do that so um, what we suggest you do is always click within the buttons on your screen so I'd hit return and it would take me back to the screen that I, I need to be on so that was kind of the other tip um, but please if you are frustrated because you you just can't get in and, and maybe one of your representatives aren't available please call one of the rest of us, Doug, myself, Judy. I mean, we're all available to help you get back up and running and, and going. So um, please feel free to use any, any of us if you're having issues. So, any questions about logging on? Or any other kind of things that issues have people have had that, um, yeah? About the, null, the null screen. Like, I had an issue last week and every time I would log in, it would come up as like null. That just means it's not finding the page. So I'd kind of go through this uh, on the manual. There's kind of that list that I've just kind of walked through. So try, you know, again, try logging off, try your compatibility view. Um, one thing I forgot uh, needed to mention also is make sure your un internet browser or internet explorer browser is the most current version. Because uh, that seems to be the one that it works with best, at least for, for us in our office. Um, so if you're in Firefox, I have more issues if I use Firefox than that. So just kind of be mindful of those, those tips. And again, if you keep getting the same error, call us. We'll walk through and, and see if we can either duplicate the effort or um, you know, we can try and fix that problem. So. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, thank you. So. A little rocky, sorry. It's all right. So I'm going to put it on this mic, not for you guys, but since we're video recording this, um, then our lovely folks online can see it so they can hear me. Um, but no, now I'm going to go through the fun parts of what happens when you actually have to report. So I'll be in home because uh, this is the main page that you guys are going to see. Um, as you know, we're on compatibility view. We're using Internet Explorer, we're using the most current one, and we're moving in. Um, so. On the very front page, it has all of kind of relevant due dates that you guys kind of will need to know. So if you guys happen to forget when something is, this all will be here. Um, as you see, the most important one for you guys right now is that the on August 16th, the year in reporting is due at noon. Um, make sure that you do this. And it would be nice, um, ideally, to try to do it before uh, August 16th at like 1130, because there is a chance that you might not get a hold of us and we can't help you after that time. So there's home. Um, if you want to get the kind of the partner agency guidelines and information like that, that all that information is there. Um, the instruction manual, the website that Eugenia was at on our website can be found really easily here. Um, if you want to contact one of us, you can do that right there. Um, and then the rest is the actual reporting. So for your guys' process, for the year end, you go into reporting requirements. And this will show up three things. Um, this one, the very bottom, 2012, should already be done by all you guys, so it should say completed for all of your work here. 
Um, and so what we're looking for right now is FY 2013. So we'll click into that. And again, all of this step-by-step -step information is on the instruction manual if you guys need it. And so what we do here is you'll see that a couple of these are already completed. Um, and so if you guys are new, that's because this information was completed during kind of the mid-year, the proposed information. So agency profile risk assessment, that's all fine there. Uh, the thing you've got to start with is in the year-end narrative. That's outstanding. So we click this and then answer your three questions here. Um, and so what you want to do, and then as advice, um, as Eugenia said, um, as Lizzie kind of pointed out, sometimes things kind of break out, you know, the website interrupts or things like that. So I would suggest, especially for these narrative questions, to enter it in Word first. That way, if it does kind of hiccup on you guys, you have all of your information and can just copy and paste it right over. Um, because it can be very frustrating after you've written kind of the perfect narrative and you submit it and there's nothing there. So um, for all intents and purposes, um, just so that we can fly through theirs, yes. So everything's fine there. If no, you'd obviously put something. I'll put, you know, maybe no, this didn't happen. And why, you know, something changed. So I'd put some information there. And then any additional comments. So put in whatever you want. So then we'll submit. So if you want to save it, so possibly you have multiple people working on this, you input the information and you want someone to check it, you would click save here, and then it would save the information. And then what would happen is that you would, could be able to go back to the narrative, it's still outstanding. You would go back to the narrative and you'll notice that all of your information, hopefully, is, yes, still there as you wanted it. So after it's been checked and everything looks great, you hit submit. It notes the form cannot be updated after submission. This is important. So make sure everything is perfect when you submit it. You hit OK. And then it will say right here that it is now completed. And pretty much the end goal is to have everything outstanding to already be completed um, is kind of the process. So after you've inputted your narrative questions, we'll go down, just kind of follow along here to see what next is outstanding. Um, and also, I talk quickly, so if you guys do have questions, feel free to interrupt me, raise your hand. If you guys want me to go over something again, definitely. Um, but we do have a lot to cover, and I want to make sure I'm most mindful of your guys' time. But at the same time, ask questions. So next, we'll be going to the outstanding section, which is activities and outputs. You click there. Um, you guys probably have a lot of activities. Um, for the case of just training, we have one activity here that we'll click on. Um, it's kind of a respite care thing that it says. It's under an outcome that should already be clicked. You should have clicked that a long time ago so that you don't have to worry about for year end. Um, the proposed information in mid-year should already be completed. And so then we'll just add a year end information. So here, you go to here, you click add. You can either type it in, um, but what's easier is if you click this button, you can just toggle exactly what's written up there. That way the words are word for word, because this information does need to be verbatim so that our database can kind of track it all. Um, so I would highly recommend you to use this drop-down box when putting things in. So I put that in for the same things. So let's see, we proposed that we'd hit 250 hours of care. By mid-year we are 125. And what do you know, by year end we hit our numbers. How about that? So we'll hit submit again. Same information, this has to be perfect when you submit it. Um, so again, if you have something possibly on Word on the side for you guys to check, I would highly recommend doing that. I hit submit and you'll notice that that is now there. It's in stone, I can't be changing it. If for chance, you know, something slips, you guys happen to put in an extra zero and you don't want to report 2,000 hours of care, um, just give us a call, myself, Eugenia, or Judy, um, and we can fix it. Um, but, you know, kind of to save both yourself and us time, uh, we would definitely encourage you guys to be careful as you're working through that. So, if you'll notice, things were updated today because I updated it there. Click update, click update, and then it should be all be updated. And what you want to do is, you guys probably have multiple activities, so what you would do is just go to the next activity, which would be just below that, and do the whole process again. Um, and keep going until you've finished all of your outputs. When you've finished all of your outputs, you then hit Submit. You hit Submit, it tells you this is set in stone, you say OK. Um, and then what you want to do is, now that there's no Submit, that means that you have completed everything. 
at what point you'd hit return. Don't use the back button, as Eugenia said. We hit return. And then it'll go back out into this, and it'll say completed. So next I'm gonna go to the indicator measurements. This is something new um, for this year, so people who are veterans, please pay attention. Um, but before I do that, just for the time being, so that everyone gets kind of a feel for how this works, does anyone have any questions with kind of the, next, the last two steps that we went through? Um, anything that maybe doesn't bother you, anything you'd like me to go over one more time very quickly? No? Okay, you always are all wizards, that's perfect. So. Next up, we'll go into indicator measurements, because that is the next outstanding thing. And so, we click, again, you guys are probably gonna have multiple indicator measurements. For this, we'll just have one, connecting people with additional services. And you'll notice that this information is new. It says that there is T represents total and S represents sample. If you guys have tried to go into this before and you're veterans, you'll see this is new, you probably didn't know what this means. And we're here to tell you what this means right now. So, what we're doing this year is trying to figure out, you know, what total population of people we're serving and also knowing what is the sample group that you guys are surveying from what's going on. What this means is that if you guys are hosting, for example, an after school program and you have 100 kids that are in the program, you don't need to survey all 100 kids in order to make sure that you're getting, you know, good information that you're giving to us. You can survey a small group of that population, well, not small, but a representative group of that population that can then be kind of expanded out to the total. Um, and I will explain that in multiple ways, so it's okay if that's still confusing. Do we have a slide on this, or is this all? Okay. Uh, do we have a slide on this? No, cool. Well, then I will talk to you about it. So, pretty much what it is is that you look at this group and we'll have a sample of people that we looked at. So, like I said, I have an after school program. That after school program serves in total 100 kids. So 100 kids attend the program. That means that I put in 100 as my total base. So every single person that my program kind of is affected will be right there. So what I wanna do is then I survey of those 100, I give them, I give 90 of them surveys to try to make sure that the group is representative. We'll be talking about representative groups later. As of right now, you can kind of ignore that part. But I survey 90 people. So of those 90, I'd say, let's say 80 kids um, kind of achieved what's going on. So for example, if I'm trying to increase, increase the youth's positive self, sense of self, positive self-esteem. So I surveyed 90 people about that, and of that I found 80 of the kids increased their positive self-esteem. So I put that 80 there. What's nice is that then this thing automatically calculates that I achieved 88.89% of my goal, right? So of all the kids I looked at, 88.89 of them achieved what I wanted. What you do, and it's okay if you're not following, we'll be doing plenty of examples on this. So we'll make sure you'll, you'll be masters by the time this is done. So what we'll do is you need to copy over this percent achieved up to the top so that these percentages are the exact same. And then when you click out, it'll automatically kind of calculate what percentage of 100 this number is. So what I did here was that there are two different groups, the total group and the sample size group. The total group is how many people your program specifically serves. You know, how many people do you guys hope to change on an outcome level in your group? The S base is how many people you explicitly give a survey to, you explicitly give a measurement to when you're kind of trying to figure out if you achieved your outcomes. This number here is of the people you surveyed, how many explicitly improved on whatever it is you're hoping to improve. So if this is you know, connecting people with additional survey, services up here, we, try, we have 100 people in our program that we try to connect with additional services and going on. Of those 100, we surveyed 90 individuals to see you know, 
has our services allowed you to be connected more in your area? Of those 90, 80 people said, yeah, you guys did a great job. You did what you said you wanted to do. And then luckily the computer calculates what percentage that is. You move that up to here. And then luckily again, the computer does the rest and it tells you what your total is. And you have all of that. So that is kind of how we're measuring it now. The reason we're doing this, and if you'll notice before, it was kind of just these top three looking at the groups. And the reason we're doing this now is because before we couldn't distinguish between the agencies that gave us their total information or the agencies that just kind of gave us their surveyed population. And so this kind of very clearly defines what exactly you're giving us for the information. And also, and we'll be looking at this for next year, and I'll talk about this for next year, but eventually we're going to have um, to require a certain sample size population to be addressed in your group. So for example, if you survey 100 kids and you just measure you know, two of them, and all two happen to improve their program, you obviously can't say that your program is doing what it says it's going to do. Um, and so later on, we will have kind of, you know, cutoff scores and things like that, but that's for a different meeting. Really right now, just talk about what you have done in your program. It's okay of whatever your sample size is right now. Just be honest and let us know how many people you surveyed and how many people you totally saw. So, yes, Dave. Um, Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a population of 100, you send out 90 surveys, you get 30 back. Mm -hmm. So you have 30 completed surveys, you actually survey 90, mm -hmm. do you want the 30 number in there or do you want the... I want the 30. And that's perfectly fine. If you send out surveys to everyone and you only get 30 back, tell us that. Um, that's what we want to know. And that's why for this case, we're not having any minimum requirement of sample size because we're going to be using this information to figure out exactly what is true in our community and we can build from there. So what, for in your case, like you said, you have 100 kids. If you surveyed 30, you'd put a 30 here in the sample base. And of those 30, you got 29 positive responses. You put the 29 there, if that makes sense. Um, and also note is that some of you guys don't survey kind of programs. So for example, maybe you have a job completion sort of program in which 100 people go into your job completion program. And of those 100, 98 got certificates. And so what we would do here is let me delete everything out so that we can start fresh again. And I know I am belaboring this point a little bit, but I want to make sure everybody gets in. So for example, we have 100 people who try to do a job completion thing. Of those 100, 95 of them got certificates. Well, we're sampling, in effect, everyone, right? Because we're not giving a survey. We're, in effect, actually knowing exactly of the people we measured how many people are getting information. When that's the case, your total base and your sample base are the same. So 100 people were there. 100 people are the people you surveyed, so to speak. 95 got certificates. And you do the exact same thing. You bring this percentage right over. And this, your top three and your bottom three, will look exactly the same. Are there any questions? Yes? I'll be talking about that uh, later on in this. So I'll answer that when we get to, the, when we get to talking about um, the next years. As you'll notice right now, though, the proposed and mid-years are zeros. Oh, hold on. I'll get to you in a second, right after I answer uh, Crystal's question. If you'll notice, these proposed and mid-years in the totals are zeros right now. We moved everything down to sample. Um, and so this is just kind of how it was brought up. Um, we'll be discussing kind of how we move forward later. But right now, for the ones you've already put in, for FY13's proposed in mid-years, they're right here. You had a question? Yeah, the sample achieved yes. the percentage that you have to copy and put up and the total achieved, mm -hmm. always going to be the same. Always going to be the same. Can you just set it up to put it up there? We could. Um, and it, it didn't. It, it just, it's one thing we'll have you guys do manually. Uh, it just, I don't think we can. Uh, oh, we can't? She built this. She's our pro, and so. so. So, there's your answer, and so, just bear with us, I guess, as you copy and paste. Yes. What is the due date? So the due date is uh, August sixteenth. Oh, okay. So we just built due date. 
Oh, yeah. So, right. And all, sorry. Thank you. Um, the comment and due dates are information um, from kind of before any comments. So, if you guys do, so for example, Dave, his questions, he said he surveyed 90 people, he got 30 back. In there, you know, he would explain to this sampled 90, got 30 back, right? So, the comment part is when you explain everything. And yeah, the due date, um, that I should. Don't think So you can just ignore that part. Um, so again, you look through all this information. If it's right, you hit submit. It cannot be changed afterwards. You say OK. And then you go on to the next one. When that's done, you hit submit. And voila, you hit return, and you're done with indicators. To make sure that everyone has full understanding with this, uh, I would like you guys to channel uh, yourself back when you were in school, and we have a couple worksheets to, for you guys to help work through this to make sure you guys fully understand what's going on. So I'd like you guys, we'll spend the next five minutes. Um, so if you don't go through all three, that's perfectly fine. Take it at whatever pace you'd like. I want you guys to work in pairs. Um, and what you'll see is I have, we have three examples of what we were talking about on the top. Luckily, the answers are right on the back. So if you guys want to cheat, they're on the back, but we'd suggest you don't. It'll just make it harder for you guys when you're doing it on your own. Um, and so just for the next, again, five minutes, real quick, it's OK if you don't go through all three. Um, work in pairs, uh, just the person right next to you. And uh, we'll go back in, again, five minutes, and we'll get this started. So um, just really quick going over these, you'll notice um, the answers are on the back, so hopefully what was on the front, what was on the back. Um, but really, the moral of the story of what we're looking at is we're trying to see is, I mean, we're, we're measuring the same stuff, and we're trying to get to the same answers that we've been from the beginning, you know? Looking at indicators, is your program working? So really looking at is this percentage of the population that you're serving, you know, of all of the people that you give a full intervention to, whatever that may be, what is the percentage that can kind of that succeed, right? It's not going to be 100% all the time because, I mean, you guys know the population you work with, but kind of what we're looking at. So after you guys worked on these, do you guys have any questions, especially as, and if for individual cases, we can talk to you on an individual basis. Um, we're going to be here always. Um, so for any individual cases, you can talk to us about that. Any other general questions that arose from you guys doing it on your own? Yes. The percentage um, is going to be, well, kind of as it was in there, the percentage is calculated automatically, and it rounds off at that second decimal point. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you guys want to be specific, you can be, but rounding off to that second decimal point. Um, <laughs> fair enough. And as you'll notice also in terms of rounding, because that second one was a little messier, and that's the reason and the first question should have been pretty self-explanatory. The second one did have some messy numbers, and the purpose was that for that same purpose, is that sometimes your percentage isn't going to you know, terminate at that exact moment that you want. And so it's OK if it goes a little long. It'll calculate for that. And then also when you bring that S achieved back up to the T percent achieved, it'll automatically calculate to the nearest whole number what that total number achieved is, because you guys aren't going to be able to help you know, 92.15 kids. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to have helped you know, a fraction of a child. Um, so we'll kind of always round out to the whole numbers when you're working on this, um, which is fine. Other questions? Cool. Again, um, all of this is in the instruction manual that is here in the instruction manual pay part of the thing. So if you guys do have questions, there's a step-by-step -step guide in this instruction manual for you that does exactly what I did with you here today. We are recording this. You, if you guys want to listen to exactly what you heard from me today, you can get it. And then we're also available to you. So make sure that you do that, hopefully, again, before August 15th. So now Judy will be talking to you about a couple new things we're doing for demographics. Okay. So if you're wondering for yourself, 
<clears throat> Why is it that we're asking for more detail with the total size, sample size? Here's one way for you to look at it. <clears throat> All of you are doing fabulous work within your organizations and you're having a significant amount of impact on people in our community that are vulnerable. And so traditionally when you were reporting, we were not, we were almost underestimating the scope of impact that we've had collectively in the community. So many of you participated in the partner agency annual forum that we held at Hilds Bank and we talked about collective impact. And so, um, for example, in the past you may have been sampling folks and we were only getting to learn about what type of impact you had on maybe 30% of the people that you were serving. So moving in this direction will allow for us to be able to estimate, estimate um, the impact that you're having on all of the individuals that are coming into your strategy, getting service through your strategy. Does that make sense? So we don't want to underestimate what's being accomplished in the community. We want to be able to um, estimate the most accurately, the most effectively, the type of impact that um, is happening across all of your strategies. So with that said, um, as Doug referenced, you have listed here now what's all completed. And so if you continue to move down, then you're going to get a couple of categories that really make up the demographics. So um, age, ethnicity, gender, household income, race, and total served by county will be consistent. Nothing's changing in the demographics, but we wanted to give you a couple of reminders. <clears throat> And reminders for the sake of trying to develop additional consistency across how all of you report your demographics. And so that top bullet point there really is exactly what you just seen on that last screenshot of the community building database. All of these are categories on the demographic form that will be consistent. Um, what I wanted to pull, point out to you a resource that we will place on the website for your access. Um, <coughs> I'm going to jump down here a little bit. Is a tool like this. I mean, I'm afraid to talk a lot of it. <laughs> um, but what you have on the top really are the headers around the percentage of federal poverty. Because as you all know, um, as a community, we are all collectively interested in targeting households that are below 250% of the federal poverty line based on our understanding of the level of income that will be necessary for families to really be sufficient and um, managing on their own without additional supports in the community based on the household size. So this is a little quick sheet um, in the event that that would be helpful for you as you're working with families and trying to document where are they um, in terms of their level of federal poverty. Because for those of you who have used the form in the past, you know um, household income, what we're really looking at is by category, below 100% of the federal poverty level, and then we're trying to capture folks that are between 100 and 160%, et cetera. Um, so that is all consistent. Nothing changed but a resource that will be available to you if that would be helpful for you. The second bullet we wanted to remind all of you is we are seeing inconsistencies in how agencies are reporting their demographics. And so that's why we, if this is more of a reminder, not a change. But we are looking for individuals to really, or agencies to report your strategy demographics. We have some organizations that may be reporting to us their agency demographics. And so one guiding post that would be helpful for you to consider <clears throat> is when you look at your, um, your logic model, you have a series of activities that you're reporting are important for individuals to engage in. And so your strategy um, demographics should make up who are the people that are receiving services through these activities that are represented on our logic model? What we're looking to do is to see more consistency in our demographic form to what we're seeing in the logic model. <clears throat> now, not to confuse the fact that some of you um, have smaller organizations and so the activities that you do 
and have represented in your logic model may represent your total agency. But that may be a uniqueness. Um, um, so I, I want to ensure that you all feel comfortable with the fact that what we're really looking for is strategy information and not total agency. Any questions about that? Okay, thank you. If you stumble across questions as you're working on your demographics, just let us know and we'd be happy to kind of walk through that with you. The other piece that we wanted to remind folks of, no change, but we're looking for unduplicated counts of individuals. And so another good guiding post for you is, um, this is a little shorthand of what your logic model um, includes. So you'll have activities and then um, what we've asked for you to do is to help us understand for each activity how many unduplicated individuals are receiving or participating in that particular activity so that we can start connecting the dots a little bit more easily. So that was something that we've covered in a prior training, but we ask that you continue to do that because it helps our solutions team members as well as staff clearly understand how many individuals unduplicated, so unique people, are engaged in each particular activity that you have represented on your logic model. Now we understand that, um, for example, you may have some individuals um, who get access to uh, activity A, for example, but don't necessarily get activity B. And so it's not going to just clearly add up at the bottom. We understand that. For some of you it will, because maybe every single person that you touch in your strategy will get access to every single activity. So you know for yourselves um, what would be true for your strategy. But bottom line is we would like for the demographics to represent all of the unduplicated, so the unique people who are served by your strategy. Any questions about unduplicated count? To the unique people. Okay. So those are more just reminders for you um, because we're trying to develop as much accuracy as we can across all of um, the partners that we have that we're trying to roll up reporting for. Okay. So if there aren't any questions beyond that, that then separates us. This is all, all the things that we've talked about so far have been relative to the fiscal year 2013 end of year reporting. And we're going to make a little jump now to giving you a heads up to fiscal year 2014 reporting since we're now in that. Okay. Any questions on demographics before I pass this back to Doug? Okay. I'm ready. Put this here. Pardon me, sorry. Mic up. It'd be nice if we had more than one of these. Okay, so um, now talking about 2014, um, as we kind of go into there, um, one thing we would like you to look at as we're working on the 2014 logic model, um, because you did do your projected 2014 projected counts back in January, um, we would like you guys to look back at that and see, again, looking at that base, sample, and achieved, all that fun stuff that I was talking to you guys about before, looking at that and seeing how that impacts what you guys said you were going to be achieving um, back in January. So uh, what we want to do is, I'll show you this. So doing kind of what Judy said, you'll have completed all of those, and you'll be done with FY13, year-end reporting. Congratulations. And then we would move into FY 2014 reporting. And what we do here is you can check your outcomes and activities and outputs, um, but those should be perfectly fine. You probably won't have to do anything there. Um, but we'd look at the indicator measurements. And as you'll note in our proposed indicator <laughs> measurements, that what happened is that we brought the three proposed statements that you said that you were going to go and complete in FY12, and we moved them down to your sample um, under the assumption that 
what you guys were reporting to us were the number of people surveyed. And the reason, again, um, I think Judy very clearly pointed out, the reason we're doing this isn't just to give you guys more work. Um, we actually don't like doing that, contrary to popular belief. Um, but it's really to make sure that we're getting a very accurate count of what the good work that you guys are doing. We don't want to short sell kind of the hard work and the hard, you know, the great impact that you guys make in the community um, to all of our donors. We want to make sure that what we're telling them is exactly what you're telling us. And so this is just a way to be more specific. And so what we'd like you guys to do is just to look back in here and modify this as you see. So if kind of, just make it kind of representative. So if you said that you were going to serve 234 people, um, and that's still true, just bring that right up. Um, if you still think that you're going to achieve 119, still put that there. It'll automatically calculate what that percent is, um, if that's true. And then if you're going to be proposing to get a different sample size, we want you to put that in. Um, and so again, these are all just kind of projected numbers. I know it's not going to be perfect. You guys cannot see the future. You guys don't know of all the surveys you give in, how many you'll get back. You don't know kind of what's going to be changing. But this is to get your, uh, a good feel and to have consistency between your FY14 proposed mid-year and year-end. Um, that way, when we do this reporting for mid-year in January, it'll be a breeze because you'll already kind of have the groove of what sample size and achieved work is. Um, and so this is really just doing a little bit of back work to make sure that it's right. Um, so fairly simple, just kind of do that, do your proposed work. Um, the same rules apply. So this percent needs to be the same as this percent. Um, everything calculates out the same. And then you just submit. So the numbers should be already in there for you guys. Um, just got to clarify it for us, again, to make sure that we're reporting accurately what's going on. And again, um, the reason we're doing it is because we had noticed some inconsistencies before of some people would report their sample base, other people would report their total base. And so from that, we couldn't get a clear idea of, I mean, is our number smaller than it should be? Is our number larger? This way will give us kind of a pinpoint information on exactly the good work you guys are doing. Um, so that we can share it to the world and let everyone else know all the cool stuff that's going on. So luckily, you guys don't have to hear my voice for very much. And I will pass it back. So right, we're submitting it. I'll pass it back to Judy um, or Eugenia, someone, to talk about um, just a quick update on demographics. So All this switcheroo, we're all about equal opportunity among our department staff, so. Okay, so one other thing that we wanted to give you a heads up for now that we have already started fiscal year 2014, um, the categories that you would see on your demographic form will be consistent um, with the exception of one addition. So I've already shared with you um, that household income graph that we'll have posted on the website that looks like this, so that if that's helpful to you, um, as you're working with individuals, as you're maybe enrolling them into your program, that that would be available to you. In addition to the categories that you're all familiar with, there is one category that we will be adding, and that is um, really around household types. So what you will see um, are four different ways that you will be able to categorize your households. And we're sharing this with you intentionally now. We, can, we know that we're you know, a couple days into the fiscal year, but we would like for you to use this fiscal year to begin capturing as best as you're able the type of household that your strategy is reaching. Our intention in doing that is as you know, we're gearing up for the fiscal year 2015 to 2017 RFP process. And this will give, by recording this information this year, this will give you the opportunity as you write your next RFP to be able to say how it is that you're targeting um, household types that are important based on the needs that we see in the community. So we looked at census data and um, derived at these four because we didn't want it to be a long list of 10 or more um, type family types. So 
So you'll see there, we're looking at two or more adult-headed households with children. Um, again, two or more adult-headed households without children um, because we may be targeting either or. Um, as well as if we're looking at single adult-headed households, so perhaps maybe um, older adults, we wanna know whether or not they do have children over 18 or whether or not um, they do not. So we've tried to simplify it, keep it pretty simple, um, but again, our purpose in doing so is that you have more information um, to perhaps even validate the strength of how your particular strategy is reaching a population um, of importance for our community to try to reach in the next RFP process. So that will be new, but are there any questions or concerns about these categories? Um, Tim? Yeah, some, some, applica some applications, um, including I think one, our family one, there's a place for the head of household and then another adult, another, another well, uh, head of household, another man of the family. Um, <coughs> if what you're getting at is, is, is are there, how many adults are in it, I'm not sure that having the word headed is particularly helpful. And if that's important, then leave it in, but if you're try trying to get at whether there's more than, whether there's two or more adults or just one adult, whether they, how, how they may define themselves on an application might, might, might not match up at the end okay. of the thing with what you're, what you're trying to get here. Okay. How about we, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that issue to make sure that we can be as consistent because that's the whole point of us raising the consistency factor around our demographic reporting is we want to be as accurate as we can possibly be. So um, we don't currently have this on the database, so you wouldn't see it um, yet. The first time you will see this category would be um, the mid-year, fiscal year 2014 mid-year reporting. So let us talk about that and we will send an email in follow-up to this training to confirm to you that language to ensure that it's workable for everybody um, and that it can be as most consistent as possible. And that way you know what you would be seeing in the mid-year. Is that fair and reasonable? Okay, thank you, Tim. Okay, and then the other um, just point we wanted to mention to you, nothing alarming, um, but those of you who are familiar with our reporting forum know that we have Johnson County listed as well as other, but what we're finding is <clears throat> when organizations serve individuals in those areas with their strategies, it starts to skew that total number of individuals served on the demographic form, which doesn't necessarily align with what you're telling us in your logic model. So what you're telling us in your logic model would be the United Way um, service area, and we wanna make sure that the demographic totals align with that as well. So um, traditionally we had them in there um, when we started this whole transition um, to impact and a three-year RFP process to understand the scope of service that strategies were engaged in. Um, but at this point we've evolved and we've developed to the point where we, we care about the work that you do all over the world, um, but we want to make sure that our reporting um, starts to jive between the logic model and the demographic form. So um, nothing to be get alarmed about. Um, it's just more about consistency. So that's the other change that you would see on the demographic reporting at mid-year. Okay. David. If you go back to that, <coughs> under looking at account size with A and B. This one? Yeah, so uh, hypothetically speaking, if there's 200 in A and there's 100 people in B, but 50 of those 100 in B also got served in A, then my total unduplicated account would be like 150. Mm -hmm. And that 150 should match up with my demographic. Correct. In a perfect world. Correct. Because your demographics would represent unduplicated. Yep. That was a great example, David. Thank you. I'll have to stage you more often. <laughs> <laughs> Callie. Just the they with. 
Yeah, the household structure gets messy, doesn't it? We see a lot of diversity with all of the strategies, and so um, how families define themselves as a household can really vary. And so <clears throat> we don't want this to become so complex that you know it takes more time to figure out which category a family might fit in. Um, but in that instance, um, you know, to your best ability, how you see it fitting within, you know, these options is really how we would, it's almost a, using your best estimate without being scientific, but giving some direction about what are the household structures generally like, okay? And we may, um, you know, with fiscal year 2014, um, hopefully what you experience through the partner agency roundtables is more of an open exchange and dialogue and we will want to learn about how are these options or these categories working for us because um, if there's a significant issue with using these um, that we have some feedback from all of you on how we might need to adjust them we could do that in the next three-year RFP so we're really looking at this Fiscal year 2014 is being a learning opportunity among us as partners. Um, but we would like to see this category added so it can be a guiding post for us. Does that answer your question, Callie? Yes, yep. Six county service area is what we would like to see represented. Yep. And if you can always keep the mindset of, does the content in my logic model mirror what's in my demographic form? If you can say yes to that, submit. No. So how would we how would we capture that kind of data if you're removing other as part of the demographic? Well, are you doing a survey type of strategy? Um, do you currently ask their residency like their zip code? Uh, no, but their county. Mm-hmm. So then in that instance what we would be asking you to do is to pull, you know, your sample, your total sample and your sample would only be reflective of residents that indicate they're part of the six county service area for United Way. And the reason for that is because we want to be as um, our target of our collective work is really around the six county service area. So we want to be as transparent to our donor base about what can be accomplished in that six county service area with the funds that are generated because the funds stay in the six county service area. Yeah. Good questions. Any others related to the demographics? Okay, and I'm gonna work down here <clears throat> because those are the major uh, elements that we wanted to be able to walk through with you today. So going back to how Eugenia started us, our intent was to make sure that you feel equipped to be able to estimate your total impact on the individuals that you're reaching through your strategy. <clears throat> so do you feel equipped to do that? Or are there any remaining questions that would be general enough that we could answer here? As Doug had referenced, we will be available for unique questions for agencies. <clears throat> the second objective for us was to make sure that we can um, try to be as consistent as possible with our demographic um, documentation across organizations. So everyone feel equipped with that too? Okay. Um, if that's the case, Eugenia had one additional point we wanted to make um, that we don't want to miss out on. Or 
can right hold here. it. Okay, I'll just hold it. Okay, so since so many folks said that they were new to the database, I just want to make sure that you have your own unique account that you're using. Um, so please don't use uh, maybe someone else's, um, or maybe if someone has left the organization, you know, we, we need to get that database uh, or their account kind of deleted so that they no longer have access but really you know um, let us know so we can create your own unique password uh, and, and keep that where it needs to be so thank you okay well that's all we have um, to share with you today but we really do sincerely appreciate your time um, and your partnership in the work but as always you know where to reach us if you need us because we're happy to help thank you